really, Gigi, we have to believe her. We have to believe the woman who's made these videos. Trish has been known to post troll videos before about changing race, coming out as gay, and other things. In the days following Trisha Paytas coming out as trans, there's been a lot of reactions. And this may leave some of you wondering, how does Trisha Paytas stay so oblivious to why the community is reacting the way it is? It seems perfectly clear, but it's like she's not seeing it. It makes you wonder how something could be right in front of you without even realizing it. And how could someone who has so many videos being made about them from members of the trans community still not understand? In this video, we're gonna try to get to the bottom of it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can learn from them and get the wheels turning a little bit with a nice little blend of philosophy and psychology and all that. And tomorrow I will be making a video about how Blair White's Trisha Paytas video landed me as a subscriber to Blair White. So anyways, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I'll be making that video tomorrow and I make a bunch of other cool content. All right, and those of you who are new here, uh, every video that we do, we donate 20% to a good cause. So this video, 20% will be donated to the Trevor Project. And they're all about helping the LGBTQ youth, all right? So not only will 20% of the ad revenue from this video go towards the Trevor Project, but I've also provided a link down in the description and the pinned comment below if you would like to donate to them directly. All right, so as most of you know by now, chances are why you're here, you know that Trisha Paytas came out as trans just a couple days ago, and there's been a big reaction from the community. And since then, she's actually made two follow-up videos. All right, one of them, she was crying in it. The next one, she titled, I'm Questioning. Um, the one before that, yeah, it was a, an apology video, which wasn't really an apology. But anyways, if you watch them, you're watching these and you're just like, how, how is she not understanding? How is she not getting why people are so upset with her. And some big creators, like I mentioned, uh, Blair White made a video, uh, Calvin Guerra made a video. A bunch of creators have made videos. Many from the trans community have made videos and they've garnered an accumulative hundreds of thousands of views. So like we just discussed, Trisha Paytas has come out with not one, but two more videos since then, and if you watch them, it doesn't really address the valid concerns that the trans community is actually bringing up. So you would think with members of the trans community discussing this, placing their criticisms, you would think that Trisha Paytas would kind of rethink what's going on, but she isn't. Why? is that. So it's easy to look at Trisha Paytas and say, that was a dumb decision. And why would anybody do that? But the reality is all of us make really dumb decisions. And honestly, if you've known me for, I don't know, more than five minutes, you know that I am no stranger to some really dumb decisions, all right? And something that I try to do and something I try to teach others is how do we minimize the amount of dumb decisions that we make, all right? So one of the awesome books that I picked up a few months ago when it came out was um, Mental Models by Shane Parrish. But the most recent book I finished was Thinking in Bets from Annie Duke, all right? So Annie Duke is a professional poker player, but she also goes out and she talks to different companies and different organizations and things like that to try to help people make better decisions, right? Like, I don't care who you are, don't you think if you could make some better decisions with your life, like it would be good? Like, there's none of us. I can't think of one person out there whose life is just so perfect where they couldn't benefit from making some better decisions, all right? But one of the things I love about Annie Duke's book, Thinking in Bets, is that she dives into so much psychology in this book. And something that she brought up was the psychology of moral reasoning, all right?
something I'm always curious about when I'm looking at, you know, Trisha Paytas' situation, if I'm looking at the decisions I'm making, when I'm looking at how people defend their beliefs and their ideas and don't really see what's going on. I'm like, why is that? And moral reasoning is actually a fantastic explanation for it. And here is a little bit of what it's about. This comes from an article from Psychology Today. It says, motivated reasoning operates in much more personal spheres as well. For example, it is seen as a mechanism people commonly use to persevere a favorable identity, particularly in Western cultures. To maintain positive self-regard, people unwittingly discount unflattering or troubling information that contradicts their self-image. Individuals engage in motivated reasoning as a way to avoid or lessen cognitive dissonance, the mental discomfort people experience when confronted by contradictory information, especially on matters that directly relate to their comfort, happiness, and mental health. Rather than re-examining a contradiction, it's much easier to dismiss it. So what does that mean? All right, motivated reasoning is not a mental illness. It is not part of a mental disorder. Well, it's part of mental health because all of us, if you're a human being, you struggle with this, all right? All of us do. Something that I've really been trying to pay attention to, not only with my videos, what I say, and my own opinions, but I've been monitoring other people as well. And something I find fascinating is how many people like to toss around the word objective and things like that, right? Most everything is subjective, unless you're talking about like the laws of physics. But anyways, this explains why it's so hard to change our minds about something. This explains why we can look at different situations and say, how are you not seeing what I'm seeing? Based on the psychology of moral reasoning, we are so easy to dismiss the new evidence that is presented to us. We're so easy to be like, oh, this person's just a hater. Oh, this person doesn't truly understand what I'm going through. All these other things. It's so easy for us to zone it out, right? We become these magnets for things that confirm our beliefs. So if you want a great example of what this looks like, here are some clips from Trisha Paytas' most recent video. I should say, I should, I should actually say, like, a lot, uh, there was a, cu a couple people, a lot of email, oh, a few emails and um, DMs from people who say, who've felt the same way. Um, I, I don't, I wanted to read them word for word, but I don't think it's my place to share other people's stories. But there were so many people, um, just one off the bat, I, I just want to read this little paragraph. It doesn't say too much about the person, but, um, Identity isn't always clear to us in a way that we can fully understand or explain. Sometimes the words don't come to us in a way that other people can comprehend. Only we can truly feel the way that we feel. You're correct in stating that people don't always transition because it's a hard and very depressing thing to do, go through. I myself don't think I can, and they say fully transition. I know that's a lot of people don't like that term, but they say I don't think I can fully transition. And even I still like makeup and hair and looking cute and dolled up from time to time. That doesn't necessarily make us women. That's just an occasional preference as far as style and appearance goes. It doesn't make the inside any less valid. It will take a lot of time for you slowly to get used to talking about yourself in a way that isn't how you were raised. By that, I mean it will be a while before you even see yourself as a boy. There are times I misgender myself because I'm so used to having to wear the girly costume that I was given at birth as part of your journey, and it doesn't make you any less of what you say you are or how you feel. So when it feels like people are against us and we're trying to hold on to our belief with that kung fu grip, we gravitate towards uh, comments, towards people who confirm our beliefs, right? So in your situation, in my situation, maybe this is finding people in our friend groups or in our family that will just agree with us. I know I can relate to this um, from back in my drug addiction, right? And which was potentially fatal because there were a bunch of people I kept around who would tell me what I was doing was normal. And I was a full blown drug addict and alcoholic. So this is one of the reasons why we need to discuss this and learn about this because in some situations, it can be deadly. When we start pushing away factual evidence, right? Or other points of view, just so we surround ourselves with ideas that already confirm our beliefs. And the strangest part, is that we start to really hone in on other things going on in the world and maybe it's something a complete stranger says that also confirms our beliefs. 
I think talking about these things is important. And I'm not victimizing myself, but I think in general, we just all need to be more accepting and loving. I just watched something on Ellen the other day about her being friends with uh, former President Bush, uh, George W. Bush. Um, and I just thought what she said was really amazing and important. Um, and I have it on my Instagram story, so let me just see if I can play this real quick. George Bush. In fact, I'm friends with a lot of people who don't share the same beliefs that I have. We're all different, and I think that we've forgotten that that's okay, that we're all different. But just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean that I'm not going to be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. So like right there, right there, when you're going through a certain experience, like Trisha Paytas is, it's easy to see what Ellen DeGeneres said and said, oh my God, this fits perfectly with my experience. Like you ever been listening to a song and oh my God, it is just fitting perfectly with what you're going through. The way our brains operate is that we are looking for that. We are looking for these connections, especially because we are wired to try to find some kind of connection. And this typically happens when we identify with, you know, music, sometimes movies, sometimes TV shows, sometimes books, and things like that. If we're feeling lonely, it's a lot easier to kind of pick out lyrics or storylines or characters and connect to them, right? They understand how we feel, all right? So, the point of this video is you, me, all of us, we need to start recognizing when moral reasoning is coming into play. Is it clouding our judgments? Is it clouding the decisions that we're making? Is it making us oblivious to other points of view? You see what I mean? All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. But before I let you go, I just want to send out a huge thank you to everybody who watches my videos. Like I have been happier making content the last I don't know, a week or so uh, since I started doing videos like this and just, I love taking what I learn, you know, about uh, psychology, philosophy and things like that and just kind of intertwining it with everyday lives and using different things to give context. Like, I don't know, I love it makes me really happy. So all of you who have been leaving like good comments and stuff and you're enjoying this too, maybe it's my motivated reasoning going into it, but I really appreciate it and I'm having a blast and I, I'm glad you enjoy it. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And don't forget, tomorrow I'll be making a video about how Blair White's Trisha Paytas video made me a subscriber, all right? And before I let you go, I want to send out a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel uh, by buying books and merch and everything like that. And make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul, because yesterday I did a sale on my books, Rewire Your Anger and Rewire Your Anxiety. So if you're not following me on social media, you might've missed a baby. All right, but anyways, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.